I began really paying attention to this business of addiction and dependency and got very interested in developing, creating ways of working that could actually make that stop. Um, too many people are suffering, too many people are dying because of this issue. And I wanted to know what can make it stop. And I, I, I work with people who have addictions with, with, with narcotics and with alcohol, with all kinds of things. And one of the things that I do is I begin. Um, as, as I might begin a visit like this, I, I, I would say, well, why not just use? Why not just keep using? What would be the bad thing that would happen? And I'll have that person tell me. And, and she'll say, well, if I, if I keep drinking, or somebody who's, who stopped for a period of time and is in recovery might say, if I were to start drinking again or start using again, here are things that could happen. I, I, could, I could be involved in, 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 in not just getting a, 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 a arrested for driving while intoxicated, I could, be, I could be driving a car that killed someone. And, and, and I might say, and how bad would that be? And he'll say, how bad would it be? It would be inconceivably awful just to think of it. Makes me just shudder. And at that moment, I'd say, so what, what was that drink that you were interested in? And he says, oh, vodka. In, in a glass? Yeah, with ice. And it's appealing. Yeah. And I'll point out, isn't that interesting? That we can go from you telling me how absolutely horrible life will be if you were to use it, to wanting to use it within seven seconds. And, and, and when I point that out, people say, yeah, that's what makes me crazy. I can be in a meeting, in a lecture, listening to somebody talk about how horrible it would be to use. And you know what? Not only do I agree with absolutely everything he's saying, if he had to leave, I could get up and say it for him. I've heard it so many times. I can give the same lecture. And I say, why the heck do I keep going to the damn thing if I already know it so well I could do it? And it's because I hope that I could finally, finally know it enough that I could know it. Or maybe I could know it enough that I could control this horrible impulse to use that is so evil it takes over and makes me do this stuff. And I point out that these two separate parts of the mind, the part that knows how bad it would be, and the part that says, let's do it, are different parts of the mind, and they're simply not connected. It's like two houses next door to each other, neither one air conditioned, 100 degrees. You add air conditioning to this one. Good, powerful, central air conditioning. Turn the temperature down to 70 degrees. How cool is this one? Well, it's not. It's 100 degrees. Turn the temperature down to 60 degrees. How cool is this one? Not. It's still 100 degrees. Those two parts of the brain aren't connected. Those two parts of the mind aren't connected. So when I work with people to eliminate drug craving, to eliminate alcohol craving, it's not about stacking up more information here with a guy I already knew before he came in. It's about instead getting this part of the mind to know what he already knows. And when this part knows what this part knows, then it's a non-issue. And then people tell me, you know, when I think about using, I just 
feel disgusted. I don't want any part of it. I don't want to hear other people talk about it. Not because it's inviting, but because it's repulsive. And when I see that happening in somebody's life, that is the most exciting thing, because that person is going to be able to live and be the driver. And whether that's somebody who is addicted to heroin or whether it was just someone who was addicted to cigarettes. When that breaks free, there's such amazing excitement and relief and joyfulness. And it, 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 it's such an amazing pleasure to see that.